Assalamu alaikum everybody, what is happening? I'm back with another video. Today I'm going to be talking about four major ways that Istanbul has made me a happier and I think better Muslim, but definitely a happier one. So let's get right into it. Firstly, it's reminded me of the incredible diversity of this religion. When I first got here, I was really struck by the kind of, I guess, divide between like the secular side of the city and people who don't really necessarily want anything to do with religion, maybe they're Muslim, uh, but they don't necessarily practice and so on, versus people who are visibly religious and consistently practicing. But the more time I've spent here, the more I've noticed that the divisions, not divisions, but the um, distinctions and the categorizations are much, much, much more diverse than that. Now that I've gotten a little bit more insight into different Sufi orders that are here, different places where people gather, different cultures around different masajid, um, it occurs to me that it's not at all just a case of religious or not religious, but there really is this incredible polyphony of Islamic cultures, plural, within this city. In some cases, it's geographical. You go to a neighborhood and you feel like you're suddenly in a kind of cultural uh, bubble almost. And in some cases, it has nothing to do with geography really at all. And it's just sort of that people are all over the place being different and manifesting this beautiful religion in all kinds of different ways. So it's an incredible melting pot and mosaic of different Islams. And you know, I always like to talk about the diversity of Islam and talk about how it's almost always bigger than we think it is. It's always more diverse than we think it is. Whatever we think it is, it's bigger than that and so on and so on. Um, you know, we are perpetually underestimating the hugeness, the diversity, the complexity, and the just the um, multiple plural nature of this incredible deen that we all manifest in, I guess, 1.8 billion ways, however you want to slice it. But suffice to say, there's just a lot going on and so much of it you see in the city. It's incredible. And, you know, of course, it also receives visitors from all types of other countries, many of whom are Muslims coming from other countries. So it's, um, you know, a great place I've found to meet people who are just kind of coming through or passing through or spending time here as well that bring their own sort of vision of the dean to it as well beautiful reminder of that you know and it's one of those things where it's like i i thought i already knew that but then you kind of get a new taste of it and a new experience of it and you get you meet so and so and you meet so and so and you, your your vision and your understanding of this diversity just keeps stretching and stretching and stretching mashallah i love it and secondly the second way that this city this incredible city has made me a happier muslim is that you know, I'm coming from Toronto, and in Toronto, God bless that city and all the people in it who I love very much, but I feel like there's this real obsession there, and maybe all over the world, but definitely there with identity politics, okay? And I find myself trapped almost in so many of these conversations that are about being a Muslim. And I will say it's interesting because you get this from non-Muslims and you get this from Muslims too in slightly different but often remarkably similar ways where there's so much emphasis on this tribal, you know, sports team kind of uh, vision of Islam as this, you know, we call it the Ummah. Obviously, it's not, not a real thing. It is a very real thing. But at the same time, like, you know, when you're looking at it as like, okay, we have these world religions and Islam is one of them and, you know, this is the countries where it is and da-da-da-da-da and you kind of demarcate it in this way and it becomes something that um, people really get stuck on in my experience in the sense that they can't even, in some cases, see it as a spiritual practice. They can't even see it as a, something that you do or a lifestyle or an outlook they just see it as this club that you've decided to be a part of. And then all they can come up against is their assumptions about that club and the other people that they know or have heard of who are in that club. Am I making sense? And I got to tell you, I mean, I like the visions of the ummah as one body. And if one part feels pain, the other one feels it and so on. And it is a real thing that we do combine and we do have this thing that is shared but i gotta tell you like 
I think that if I if that was a guiding principle in me becoming Muslim, I want to play for this team. I want to argue for this debate squad now. I want to be in the speaker's corner taking this position. I don't really think I would have I don't really think I would have gotten involved, honestly. Like that's just not what it's about for me. Even now when I look at these speaker's corner type arguments, it's like I don't really care. Sorry, you know, it's for a lot. I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, but like if somebody's got some other religion that they like doing, great. <laughs> you think I'm trying to debunk the Trinity? I know that's very popular. I know Muslims love debunking the Trinity. Bro, I don't care. You know, you got your vehicle and it goes down the road. I'm in mine and I love my vehicle, man. It's going down the road. Inshallah. And I, I'm about the destination and I'm about the, you know... I'm about the destination. I'm about the space that we're getting into, not the color that the rocket ship is painted. You know what I'm saying? So I guess you could say I have like a, a kind of ecumenical or a, like a pluralist sort of tolerant view where it's like, I just don't see this, you know, defensiveness that I perceive in Muslims. But then at the same time, when I look at Islamophobes and how they present this stuff, it really bombs me out because like I said, they just get stuck on this identity piece. You are a Muslim. But yo, here in Istanbul... It's kind of a moot point because almost everybody that I meet, all the Turks anyway, they have some Islam in their family somewhere. A lot of them call themselves Muslim, but they don't practice or they're minimally practicing or it just looks very different in their case. Or they call themselves Muslim, they don't practice at all. They call themselves Muslim, they're very practicing. Or they are from a Muslim family, they have sisters who wear hijab and they don't call themselves Muslim. So there's this huge spectrum, but that's kind of the, the axis that it's on. To the point where being a Muslim, I find not entirely a moot point, but it's just not so loud in the dynamic. And I for sure meet people who are like, oh, you're a white dude who from the West who became Muslim. That's interesting. I'm curious. That happens. But at the same time, it's like what I'm trying to get at is that I feel very free in this city to just do the thing. Okay, so if I've spent all this time talking about identity, now I'm talking about being in a place where I get to do the thing. I get to be in a place where there are 3,000 mosques and I get to hear the call to prayer and go pray. Allahu Akbar, it's the best thing ever. In other words, I'm not focused on being a Muslim with all of the trappings of this identity stuff that is just so loaded up in Toronto, but I'm just doing Islam. You feel me? And wow, that is such a better place to be because doing Islam, like, Specifically, the prayer is just the, the well, it's the third thing I want to talk about, which is prayer and remembrance. This city has a way for me of just getting me to pray more and remember more. One, it gets me to pray more, as in do more rakats. I already do my five every day, alhamdulillah. Sometimes I do a six if I get up uh, real early. But when you go to the masjid, it's just the prayer is structured in such a way. Maybe this is common across Muslim majority places. I don't know. It's not common in Toronto. But everybody does the sunnah rakats together. We do them kind of together but apart. We line up for the prayer uh, for salat together. And then we separate for the other sunnah rakats if there are any for that prayer. So all this to say, you just kind of end up doing more rakats. And I would love to say that I do just as many when I'm at home and I always do the 10 for Dur and so on, but vulnerable moment, I don't. When I go to the jammy, I do. So that's where I'm at in my development and inshallah I'll get them all, get them all going, get them all firing on all, all cylinders, baby. But as it stands, you know, it has this effect on you. And because I love the prayer and I love the rakats and I love the effect that it has on me, I'm grateful for that. It's a beautiful influence. It's a very positive influence in my life, and it makes me happier. It makes me feel better. And, you know, I wanted to mention remembrance as a slightly separate category of this because, first of all, just hearing the adhan is remembrance in and of itself. Just hearing the word Allah ring from the minarets wherever you are in the city, just echoing around. I'm pretty blessed with this view that I have now. There's basically, actually, we might hear the Asr um, adhan in a minute. But where I'm kind of sandwiched right between two masajid. And so you hear almost like these dueling adhans, you know. Sometimes they harmonize with each other. Sometimes they drift apart. They're kind of echoing back and forth, echoing over the landscape. 
Allah, it's incredible. I'm not used to the novelty of it. The novelty does not wear off on me, especially in the morning hearing it for Fajr. It's just like, <sighs> but again, you're hearing the word Allah. And what I was, what I was kind of reflecting on recently is, you know, as someone who converted to Islam in his 30s, like the word Allah is still sort of denaturalized in a way that God isn't. I think a lot of atheists will say stuff like, oh my God, oh my God, you guys, <laughs> are they thinking about Allah? I, I kind of think no, like it's sort of almost become not meaningless, but people have become desensitized to that word. And I have too, because I grew up hearing it in those casual contexts. But the word Allah to me still has not exactly a novelty. I don't think that's the right word, but there's a difference about it that gets my attention in a different way. So when I hear Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar ringing across the sky, it's like Allah, like I'm remembering Allah, you know? Amazing. And the fourth and final and my favorite point that I've been leading up to, which is I'm probably I'm probably going to remember after I make this video that there was a fifth one that I should have mentioned. But anyway, right now, this feels like the biggest. The fourth one is my relationship with the Quran. Dude, like it's really interesting to reflect on now, because just today, for example, I was at a mosque and we prayed the door prayer and then after the prayer they did the salawat very common very beautiful i don't hear that in toronto i've n i don't i think i heard that on eid once other than that i've never heard that in toronto at all let alone every day and then two they get into the quran recitation and you know obviously if you're praying fajr maghrib or isha you get to hear some short surahs recited out loud for the salat itself that I get in Toronto, but you know what I don't get in Toronto? And this is so interesting to reflect on. It just recently occurred to me. You don't get to just sit in the mosque and just listen to Quran. I don't think I've ever had that experience. Just listening to a longer verse, sitting there for like 10 to 20 minutes, just listening in a beautiful place with incredible acoustics. You're listening to an incredible, mind-melting recitation. And for me, it is such a powerful experience that I can't even put into words. You're just, it's like you start listening to it and the guy starts reciting and you're like, yeah, this is lit. But then it keeps going and it kind of builds and it builds and it crescendos. And before long, you are annihilated. Probably not a word I should use casually. I know it has kind of a Sufi connotation I'm not necessarily trying to access. But you disappear. It's like, it's like that scene in Terminator where the explosion rips through the fence. You are just gone, baby. It's like first your body becomes this kind of prism where the the light of the quran is blasting through the rays of the quran are just searing through you and then you just disappear entirely you just disappear entirely i had this one experience when i first got here this time around first came back this time around where i was sitting in the mosque i think i was jet lagged you know and everything i was just describing was happening to me and then I actually disappeared. I think I probably fell asleep is, is the most plausible explanation for what happened. But either way, there it, it got to a point of intensity and of absentness that there was just this period of time that I was unaccountable for until eventually I just kind of came back into the room and back into my body and back into existence, you know? Allah. And it just, you know... I'm not trying to compare and say one place is better than another, you know, it's all God's world, but like being here and listening to the Quran and really hearing the Quran, I cannot put it into words. The only thing that gives me consolation is knowing that if you are a Muslim and you know what I'm talking about, then I'm getting close enough that you know what I mean because inshallah, you've had this experience, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Another really nice thing at some of the bigger mosques um, is that they have Qur'ans in it basically like every language, not every language, but in a lot of different languages, including English, they'll have a copy of the Qur'an right at the front in multiple, usually multiple. I stopped bringing a Qur'an here because I just, first day I get here, I go to the mosque, I pick one up and then I leave it there when I go back. But even if I don't have it on me when I go pray, I'll just go there and I'll, um, you know, if I go there early for the prayer, I'll pick up the Qur'an, either read a surah I want to read or I'll read pick it up from where I left off as I'm going through it, and I'll just sit there and read until the call to prayer goes out. 
So between hearing the Quran and having these absolute uh, borderline psychedelic experiences, having every single cell in my body obliterated by the word of Allah, um, you know, I'm actually also reading the English translation and and between the two of them, it's like I'm entering into this type of dialogue that, uh, you know, I'm not saying there's not good reciters in Toronto. There are, but uh, pff, these dudes are hard to beat, you know, and I obviously haven't traveled the Muslim world a lot, so I'm not trying to compare internationally either. I'm not in a position to do that. But I got to tell you, like four months in, the novelty has not worn off. And sometimes I forget like what the hell I'm doing here, you know? Like, why? what is this guy doing here? And then it's in situations, including those ones, where I'm like, yo, this is why I came here. This is why I came here. And I'll just close with this, you know, if you're a Muslim and you're watching this, I know you know this feeling where sometimes you're having a bad day or something sketchy happened or you're feeling stressed or pressed about something and you go into the mosque to pray and then... You pray and da 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 da. You do your thing and you make your dua and you bounce out of the masjid and you come out of there and you just think, Ugh. like, I feel so much better, you know. And you just notice the change in your demeanor from when you went in into then when you came out. Like it just has this effect on you where it just chills you out. It takes your stress away and it just kind of resets you at the best of times anyway that's how it makes me feel and i just bring all this up to say that not only do i have those experiences specifically here but i feel like coming to the city is kind of like it's like that on a greater level probably because i spend a lot more time in mosques here but in general when i come here and i'm spiritually lit up for a while and then when i leave at least what happened last time I went back to Toronto with that kind of, um, you know, spiritual satisfaction. I went back with that smile on my face. I went back with that peace in my heart, you know. <sighs> and it just goes, you know, to my other point of getting away from identity and just getting into just doing the thing, doing the thing and just seeing like this path has this purifying effect on me, you know. It makes me happy. Like it puts me puts my heart at ease and the more I put into it the more I get that out and in a way there's an aspect of that that is so potent and so tangible and so palpable to me it's almost like you know I mean not that there's any reason to detach it but it's almost like separate from theology it's almost separate from ideas about religion or ideas about Allah or anything like that. It's just this physical experience. It's a visceral lived experience that doesn't require faith, I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, like they're just, it just, the, the, not that I have doubts really about being a Muslim, although I have questions and challenges and provocations about aspects of the religion all the time. But in terms of the spiritual practice of just doing the thing, it's kind of impossible to have doubts because I just repeatedly again and again have this experience of being totally put at ease and totally uplifted and totally like cleansed of my nonsense, <laughs> which I am in need of. I am in need of, you know? And I wonder, you know, one of the reasons I like to make these videos is to have a little diary for myself maybe in the years to come, inshallah, I can look back on them. And I wonder if, if you guys can see it or if I'll notice it later, if there's just a difference in my vibe. Because this city, it, I'm happy here, you know. Everywhere's got problems. No place is perfect. Everywhere's got issues and everywhere there's stuff going on. And I'm not trying to sugarcoat anything or whitewash anything. But, but I really do love it here, you know. And uh, if you're in the city, hit me up. Let's uh, have some coffee, play some chess. Thank you so much for watching this video. Got a little more uh, long-winded than I thought, but that's how it goes sometimes. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, I'm in a beautiful city. So signing off from Istanbul. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. <laughs>